check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Hey, I'm Aaron. Hey, and I'm John. And, and this is Pastors and, and I'm Pizza. I'm Josh. And this is Pastors and Pizza. A podcast where three very unqualified three pastors. Very unqualified pastors consume some of the best, best and, worst and worst pizzas Western Washington has to Western Washington has to offer. While trying to make sense of our faith, figure out how it connects. How it connects to the world around us. We believe the best conversations happen over food. So pull up a chair, grab a slice, pour a cold one. And come along with us. Wherever it is we are going. Wherever it is we're going. All right. Well, welcome to Pastors and Pizza. This is the very first episode, uh, number one. And yes, that is pizza in my mouth. The and inaugural bite. The inaugural bite. We'll talk about how it went later. But uh, I'm Josh. This is Aaron. And What's up? John. Hello. And uh, this is the first episode of Pastors and Pizza, and we're excited to be with you. Um, we are all pastors at Crosswater Community Church in Salton, Washington. Uh, Aaron, you want to talk a little bit about uh, what you had, uh, why you felt like compelled to do this podcast? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, I love you guys. Secondly, I love pizza. So those are two great things right off the bat to hang out and talk about. But this idea of integrating our faith, having fun, having real life, I think a lot of times pastors get kind of put either on a pedestal or in a box and they don't act this way, talk that way, shouldn't do this, shouldn't do that. As a matter of fact, we're also enjoying a beer with our pizza. And I love that we can be real with all of that, not be afraid of it, also not get drunk. So just integrating faith into real life. That's that's what's got me here, Josh. How about you, John? Yeah, I think it's the same idea that you are just talking about. The, the overall hope is that we can... To show that we're normal people, we we like to do normal things, watch you know movies and TV and listen to music and have discussion, and we think that having food together is a natural way to just have conversation, mm-hmm. and so we wanted to do that, and we're friends and been working together for several years, and we wanted to come together and just have normal conversation and help not only our, ourselves but you guys as the listeners just be able to integrate your faith into your life because so often it's it's segmented sunday is for for church and for faith and the rest of the week i just do whatever or i struggle to figure out how it all fits into my my monday through saturday and so we want to try to help out with that yeah i'm gonna be honest with you guys too i just you know with covid and everything you just don't have a lot of time to hang out with people as much anymore and so i'm just looking forward to this time to be able to sit down and hang out with some people and Pretend like uh, COVID never happened or something. Come and, on, uh, let's go. And, yes. And eat some pizza. So if you're listening, we are glad that you're tuned in here. And uh, the way this is kind of work, going to work, we're going to have a few segments here that we do every week. And uh, one that's going to be the big one is we are going to eat a pizza every week while we're on the podcast. And we're going to talk about uh, what we like about this pizza um, uh, as far as, you know, toppings or uh, crust or what, just the things that we love about mm-hmm. pizza, the many things that we love about Hanging out with pizza, having a beer, whatever. Um, we're going to have a little grading scale on on pizza. And we talked about how we wanted to grade it, and we we thought, man, maybe we should go with John's scale. I'm, I'm going to let John introduce you what his scale is, and then we're going to introduce the scale we're going to use for this podcast. Hopefully you're not driving while he explains this. All okay. right, so some of you, if you, if you know me, you know my uh, very advanced rating scale on food, movies, basically anything. And uh, I use this scale a lot. Um, it goes something like this. It, it does have some flexibility, but something like uh, not very good. That was pretty good. That was good. That was really good. So that, that's kind of where it goes. And if you know me, almost everything fits into the category of that was all right. That's all right. That's all right. And that, there are people that mock me for that. Julie Moser, uh, Deanne Merwin, Chrissy Merwin. Um, Aaron Day. Lot, lots of people. Yeah. Everybody basically yeah. mocks me for that. So that, that's my basic scale. How many really goods have you given out recently? There's not a lot of really goods that happen, I'm going to be honest. Right. Um, the one I can think of recently was for a cookie. And it was for from a place called Crumble. Ooh. And it was basically this this Oreo-type cookie. They had, it was a sandwich cookie. So it had Oreo mm. on, on both sides and then like a cream filling, but like more like a whipped cream, not like the regular Oreo cream. Mm. And it's probably about 900 calories. And it was the best cookie I've ever had. So it, it got one of my only real goods. 
of my rating system history. Yeah, well, as good as that rating system is, we uh, decided to to do a little more standardized. Uh, oh. Yeah, uh, go a little more official with it, and so we are following the Seattle Pizza Coalition's uh, pizza grading system with a, a slight tweak. Uh, so they grade on a scale of one to five, and we are going to grade on a scale of one to five pepperonis. Mm. Uh, in let's see how many different areas here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, and eight total areas if you include the total rating. Uh, so we're going to be judging a pizza on its crust. Uh, how did it taste? And the description here says, uh, was it easy to wrangle? I'm not mm-hmm. exactly sure. I've what never means. met a crust that I was not able to handle. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know. Dip, uh, but it wasn't handle, it's wrangle. I know, but that, to me it's the same thing. Like, oh, you, all you right. have to wrestle it. Where'd you grow up? Where'd you grow up? Means. Wrangling and handling? It's a pizza rodeo. <laughs> Yeehaw, it is a pizza rodeo. <laughs> Uh, the next uh, criteria we'll be judging on is the sauce. How likely would you be able to eat this with a spoon? I must confess, I've I've eaten some uh, spaghetti sauce or to- tomato sauce with a spoon. Absolutely. There is a marinara sauce that is out of uh, Brooklyn Brothers in uh, Everett, and that. Hey, heads I up! Can eat that we're stuff. coming your way, by yeah, the way, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Brothers. Brothers. We're All gonna right. hit that up. Um, uh, the next criteria will be cheese. Was there too much? Too little? Was it mm. gross when it cooled down? Greasy? Um, toppings ratio, was there enough of everything? Was anything too overpowering? And then, of course, value. Is this pizza something that we can afford to eat on a regular basis, make a habit of? Mm. Uh, and then charisma. How all of this comes together uh, to, to make the best pizza possible, and that could also include the restaurant or the ambient, the ambiance. Yeah, because that ambience was sounding a little bit like you were from the Midwest. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> Uh, and then we're going to uh, give it a total rating on a scale of one to five pepperonis. So uh, today I'm going to let Aaron uh, let you know the pizza that we've got on tap for us today. And then we're going to uh, talk about the beers that we're all sharing as well. Here we go. We went to Sahara's Pizza. We're keeping it local right off the bat. And we got a... Wait, is there an S on the end of that or is it just Sahara? It was Sahara's. Like I stopped by Sahara's with the apostrophe Is it the one next to Walmart? <clears throat> it, okay. That's fair. I appreciate you guys holding me accountable. As I read the box, it says Sahara Pizza. So we went to Sahara, not Sahara. Went to Sahara Pizza, and we got a customized pizza. It's got pepperoni, which isn't all that different. But then we went to smoked mozzarella, jalapeno, and pineapple. And currently, I am drinking a Hefeweizen out of the well-known Joseph's Bra, or in other words, the Trader Joe's version. And it is actually surprisingly good. And I, we don't have a rating system on that. John, what are you uh, drinking tonight? Uh, I haven't actually had a drink yet. I was to open this guy up. Ooh. Okay, this is the, uh, the Trickster IPA from Black Raven Brewing over in Redmond. Ooh. Uh, pretty, pretty good beer. I'm going to take a drink. Yep, I'm, uh, I'm actually not uh, much of a beer aficionado. I was telling Aaron this the other day. So my, my beer story is this. I, I don't really know all the different styles of beer or what I actually like. So I just decided to pick IPAs as my beer, <laughs> whether I like them or not. Mm-hmm. And this is going to disturb my brother, but they all taste the same. Oh, my. Not really. Not literally all the same, but very close. They're all all right. They're all this all- is like... <laughs> This is like hop world, man, out here in the Northwest. I think the people will probably disagree with you on that one. I am not bit. nuanced enough to be able to tell the difference between citra hops or whatever other hops there are. I don't we know we can appreciate that your palate isn't alcoholic. Good job. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I've got the, because uh, it's October, I have the Elysian Night Owl, the pumpkin ale. And, uh, you know, it's quite pumpkin-y. So that's, Elysian does that kind of thing, and it's very... Uh, it's like a pumpkin spice latte. Met a beer. <laughs> <laughs> does it does it make you feel like your like potential aficionado is brought into question because you're drinking a pumpkin spiced beer? No, I think it just makes me feel like I'm on a hipster hayride. And, <laughs> and that we're all sitting around with banjos and Drinking pumpkin. We beers. are from Maybe. Sultan. Did one of us to... actually has a banjo, so it's it's not totally implausible. Would it yeah. be the one John that's drinking 
The it pumpkin. It is the one drinking oh, the pumpkin. Okay. Beer. Oh. I just wish I could grow the beard. You know, I've got. I just can't do the hipster beard like they have. As far as the pizza goes today, how are we feeling about the pizza? Actually, in general, love it. I think it's really good. It was spicy right off the bat. I loved that. Yeah, those those jalapenos are pretty hot. Felt uh, those right well, now. so my my initial reaction was a little bit tainted trying to get the pizza out of the box because they didn't exactly cut it all the way through. So it, I ended up with like pizza strips or something. You said <laughs> it was a little soggy. No, it wasn't soggy. It just wasn't cut, so it was hard to <laughs> remove the, the pieces. But overall, it's good. I actually like Sahara. It's good. It's a good pizza overall. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've had Sahara once or twice living in Salton here, and uh, I, I mean, this is a good one. You know, I love the uh, the jalapenos and love the pineapple. And I think that's what brings up mm-hmm. this is a big sticking point for some people: pineapple on a pizza. What's our take? I mean, we ordered a pineapple pizza, so it's kind of. Uh, it kind of speaks for itself. But. We, we could have been trying to do that from being provocateurs, but actually I like the pineapple on there. The only thing I wouldn't like about, about pineapple on the pizza is if it was the only thing on the pizza. Right. But since I would never do that, I like it. Yeah, we, we did intentionally order pineapple to get that, you know, the, discuss the elephant in the room, right? There's all sorts of debate on pizza circles about whether pineapple belongs on pizza. Mm-hmm. And I generally would not choose to put pineapple on my pizza. But if you're going to, I think this is a good combination. Because usually when you get pineapple on a pizza, it's with Canadian bacon. And it just makes for a pretty bland pizza because mm-hmm. Canadian bacon's pretty bland. And the pineapple, well, well citrusy, you know, it's kind of bland. And no so, offense, Canada. Having the, having the pepperoni and the jalapeno definitely is an improvement. I agree. I, I'm a huge fan of sweet and spicy. Mm. Love mm-hmm. that. You give me some of those like... That was your rap name in high school, sweet wasn't and it? Sweet spicy, yeah. I've, I've, I've had several rap names. <laughs> we'll, we'll probably have a different rap name every podcast. Word. Um, but the um, sweet and spicy, man. You get that like that Thai sweet chili sauce. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now we're talking. I'm, I'm all about some of that Thai sweet chili I'll put fruit on pretty much everything. I like apple on pizza. That's pretty good, too. Oh, wow. I'll put fruit on... I don't know what else you put fruit on. I love it. Anything. What What else did we get from Sahara? Oh, man. We got the garlic twisty bread. And I'm going to say this to my wife. I'm sorry that you didn't have one. I will save one for you. I only ate one. The reason why I apologize to my wife, Kathy, is because when I have garlic and she doesn't, it makes for a difficult evening. And she could be separated from me and still smell it from like maybe the door. And so I'm bringing that home to you. But it is really probably one of my favorite things at Sahara. Yeah, their garlic twisty bread is really good. A little I side mean, of marinara. What's not to like about butter and... Lots of butter. Mm-hmm. Butter and garlic. Mm-hmm. Mix it together. Mm-hmm. 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 Yummy. Yep. Put it on anything. Yep. Oh, yeah. All right, so should we get so into our ratings? Yeah, all right. So let's run around these ratings here. The crust on a scale of one to five pepperonis. Mr. Aaron, how do you feel about this? <clears throat> well, when I was really hardcore keto, I wouldn't have had the crust. I would have just ate the topping, but I've kind of backed away from that. I think it's a three for me, Josh. I actually like their crust. And they got a little crispy cheese on the back, and I'm chewing it right now as we speak. It's outstanding. It's got good durability in my mouth. All right, go ahead, John. Were you able to wrangle it? You didn't quite address that. I handled it just fine. Thank you. <laughs> All right, good. Um, yeah, I, I, as my rating scale would probably give away, I, I have a hard time assigning specific values to things. Um, but I will, for the sake of this, give it also a three. I think it's a, it's a good crust. It's, a, it's got the right amount of chewiness to it. It's you know decent thickness. Um, so yeah, I give it an overall three probably on the crust. Yeah, I'm, uh, I may be a little bit of a dissenter here. I, I think the crust is fine. I, you can say it's about what it is. It's fine. It's, I don't think you order Sahara for the crust. Nobody's like, oh, have you had the crust at Sahara? It's just so good. I mean, maybe somebody does, but I don't know. Sahara is all about the mix up with the toppings, uh, the kind of, you know, uh, gourmet, if you will, toppings. and It's a little dense uh, for as thick as it is. So 
Maybe I'm not a huge fan of that, but I think if I was to give it something, I'd probably give it two stars. And you mean pepperonis? Yeah, two uh, mm. two star shaped pepperonis. Nicely done. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, two pepperonis. Uh, as far as sauce goes, would I eat this with a spoon? I like the sauce. I think it's a pretty solid sauce. There is. It's not like uh, overly done, but it's pr- it's a pretty thick sauce. It is. Um, it's not like a. Uh, a runnier sauce. It's a really thick sauce and um, pretty acidic. So, I mean, I, I like it. Uh, it's fine. I'd probably give it a three. <clears throat> Me too. I'm at a three on that. I I would have be hard pressed to give anything a five. So if I'm saying three, then it's probably you know pretty good. And so I would eat it with a spoon. I also eat peanut butter with a spoon and a lot of other things with a spoon. But ironically, not my cereal. John. The sauce, I think, is pretty good. Um, it's it's a little bit sweet, a little, a little bit of spice to it also. Um, it's a good combination there. I, I don't know if I'd eat it with a spoon so much. I mean, maybe, but I mean, it's probably three. It's all right. How was the cheese for you guys? It was good. It had a little kind of crisp to it, and we had ordered something a little bit different with the smoked mozzarella. Got to be honest to the Sahara folks, I didn't taste the smoked necessarily but it was a good strong taste and so i like it i'd give it three yeah that's the the cheese on sahara is kind of got that like small town pizza place vibe i don't i don't even know what to how to explain that mm-hmm. it's browned a little bit brown a little bit mm-hmm. uh, it's got like which a little, i love uh, it's got a firmness to it mm-hmm. uh, kind of spotted i i noticed the difference with the smoked uh mozzarella i thought it was I didn't notice the difference in taste. I just noticed the difference in how much cheese there was. There was definitely extra cheese on this one. And so I like that. And I, I kind of like it when the cheese gets a little bit, um, it cools down and gets a little bit thick. And okay, kinda, I, okay. I kind of like that a little bit. That that almost like, um, it's almost like the way that cheese is uh, on a, a pizza that's, uh, you know, cold. Mm-hmm. I, like, I like a good cold pizza for <clears> breakfast. <throat> Uh, I I could have never described cheese on a pizza with as much detail as Josh just did, <laughs> and likely I likely never will. So um, I I did not taste the smoked aspect of the mozzarella. It tasted exactly the same as as any other Sahara pizza I've had, and I actually prefer kind of the hot stringy like it pulls when you mm. get a piece i, mm-hmm. I prefer that mm-hmm. not the hard piece or in a hard cheese i'm just saying stuff. i can appreciate it i'm gonna i talk, mean yeah you know so it was don't me, back don't back it up bro. for me i'm Come gonna on. say the cheese was probably a two <laughs> probably a two on the cheese a two? oh all two right on two pepperonis on the cheese which now is starting to sound awkward when we say that but yeah, okay the uh, toppings ratio. Mm-hmm. How do we feel about that? I was, I was kind of, I love a lot of toppings. So I mean, the more toppings you can put on there, the better. I mean, if it's not, you know, falling apart, and uh, even then, I mean, you eat it with a fork. Ah, oh, it's good. Nice. Yeah, just go for it. That's uh, another discussion, though. Do you eat pizza with a fork, and is that okay? No, it's not. It, I mean, it, it's not ideal, but it's a thing you can do mm-hmm. and should do. Especially if it's spilling right all over. Occasions. If, right? if, if well, you're eating Chicago yeah. style pizza, you better yeah. be eating that one. Yeah, yeah. Mm, no, it's still you still hand, you still put it. Pick it's it up all right. It's work. two to three. You've I mean, been if, voted if, off, Jeff. If Josh's scenario of the toppings are so much that they're spilling all over, and then you use a fork. Absolutely, that's great. But only as mop up duty, not yeah, if the you, initial if you have shoveling to use it, in it your mouth. use a fork just to eat a piece. All right. No, it's all right. With this one, I'll say that I thought that the there was the right amount of jalapenos, the um, a really good mixture there with the pineapple, mm-hmm. and so good, sweet, spicy. Love that. Yeah. Um, I can eat that sweet, spicy all day. I've already, but we've already been down this rabbit hole, so. Yeah. So where are, you, where are you giving it? I'm giving that a, uh, I'm going to give that a three and a half pepperonis. We're doing half pepperonis. So. Oh, we can do, I didn't know we could do half. We've got half pepperonis. Right. John, where are you at on this? This opens up a whole new world for me. Yes. Um, I would agree. More toppings is always better unless you're getting a pizza that you don't like because somebody else chose the toppings, then, then I would not want that. But in this case, more toppings is better. But that said, I think they did a pretty good job. 
the con the mixture was good. The spice and the sweet, like Josh said, was good. Uh, pepperoni was fine. Um, so I mean, it's a it's a solid three. It's what I would expect. I really liked the combo this time. I'm in the three and a half range as well. That's cool. Uh, as far as value goes, uh, how do we feel about this? I mean, Sahara is not the cheapest pizza on the block, uh, but we live in Salton. But it's so one, of few, of, on it's one lock, of the few so. pizzas on the block. It's one of the few pizzas on the block. So, uh, <laughs> what do we think about value? I mean, I'm not going to make it a regular habit. I mean, once a week is probably out of, out of my pocket range, but, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, uh, it's good when you have it. If you get the right one, then you can feel like it's worth it. You know, if you get, right. if you get the right... You know, I, I like the tiki tiki there. I think it's real great. So when I get that, if it's made real well, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's it can be worth the money. But yeah. I'd say looking at the fact that we also got the uh, the uh, what do they call it garlic twisties, I was it was pretty good. And can I say how much it was total? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so it was twenty six eleven or something like that for a large pizza and these twisties. Honestly, I think that was a pretty good deal. It, it was a large pizza for seventeen ninety nine, and we customized it. So, I thought it was, I thought it was a good bargain. Yeah. I'd I'd give that a three and a half as yeah, well. Yeah, it's pretty filling, so it goes yeah. a long way. It does. Yeah, it's, it's a fourteen inch pizza, so it's a good size pizza. It uh, we we used a coupon that was available online. So if you're if you're going to order pizza from Sahara, make sure you ask for the coupon deal. Absolutely. Uh, so seventeen ninety nine, up to five toppings. I'm kind of a cheapskate. So, I mean, to me, it, it feels a little bit pricey, but I know pizza places in particular are, well, really everywhere, but pizza places are getting much more expensive. Uh, things are, are getting harder to do. It's the operating costs are getting a lot higher. So, the, you know, they've got to do that. So I get it. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't, like Josh, I, I couldn't make this a habit no. um, weekly for, for me, or maybe even every couple of weeks is probably a little much, but it's not bad. Uh, I, I, probably give it more of like the two and a half on the value hmm. um, but know that the, the, that's kind of the trend is the, the prices are yeah, going i'm not like sure that. i actually that's gave true. it any pepperonis but i'm gonna lend i'm gonna probably land right there on the two and a half as well all right um charisma so how all this comes together and we're you know just a little uh a little aside here we are eating this at the office at Crosswater, we got it to go. It was a carryout order. So we're not actually eating in Sahara, though we have eaten in Sahara pizza before. Definitely. So uh, we're eating it here. I mean, I think part of the charisma of this pizza is that you can eat it at home, <laughs> that you don't that, have to eat it. That's out. And, true. Uh, in the world of COVID and everything right now, it's just as well. You just take it home and eat it. And mm. then you can watch the game or, you know, your favorite show. You can catch up on Ted Lasso or whatever it is you're watching. Oh, and, wow. Believe. And, and just go for it. Um, but yeah, so, so yeah, I mean, I think all said and done, the charisma of Sahara, I mean, it's uh, three, maybe, you know? I think, I think they've got probably some room for improvement on cleanliness inside the actual uh, restaurant itself, but they've been wonderful to us taking good care of us as a family, taking good care of us as a church. Um, shout out to John. Thank you for all that you've done for the church and for our community. I would say, yeah, I'm kind of in the three. Tonight I called and it wasn't the best experience that I've had on the phone. So I called there, <clears throat> didn't have the best, so that's probably keeping it for me at the three rather than three and a half. So that's it for me for the overall charisma. Yeah, I, I definitely am someone who likes to, to go out. I like to try different different pizza places in particular um, on on Yelp, which I use a lot to try to determine places to go. I don't do a lot of reviews on there, but when I do, I like to incorporate many aspects like we're doing with this, not just the food. And I think one of those places is the atmosphere, is the environment. Mm -hmm. Is it a cool place? Is it a place you just want to hang out? Um, as Josh said, we have eaten at Sahara before, although we're not today. Um, so there, it's not a good environment to hang out. You, you don't want to necessarily hang out there. It's not bad necessarily, but it's not like I must hang out here. Right. Um, so taking that part <laughs> out of the equation, uh, customer service, Sahara gets kind of a bad rap here locally, um, particularly on like Facebook and stuff like that. Aaron mentioned some of the problems with cleanliness, with customer service. I've never really had issues with Sahara on those aspects. 
And so I don't want to dog them based off of other people's experiences. Uh, but that said, all, all total, everything included, uh, I give it a three. It's kind of mm-hmm. just your average local pizza place. <clears throat> total rating for this pizza, you know, I, all things said and done, I, I think it's about as average of a pizza as you can get with maybe some bright spots here and there. You sure, know? sure. Um, there are some bright spots, some things that you're like, yeah, I'm going to go to Sahara and I'm going to get those twisty breads because that's mm-hmm. just the thing. i got to get those. And, you know, like for me, it's like some of those more experimental toppings, you know, like uh, the tiki tiki. I love what they what they do with that. And and some of those other uh, some of the other ones that they have, I, I think it's pretty unique. And I like to kind of branch out a little bit in that way. So. So, I mean, it, you know, probably, a, again, a solid three with mm-hmm. on on the right day could be a four, you know. Nice. And especially right. depending on how hungry I am. <laughs> Even better. Right. And uh, they are definitely accommodating to you want to do half a pizza because you have some people in your family that prefer one kind because some of these more gourmet ones are like nah we're not going to mix it up like that but they're willing so i think that kind of customer service is worthy of a half pepperoni see what i did there with the halves and stuff you're welcome the haves and have not wow uh, i mean i kind of gave my overall I, I think it's a i think it's a three pizza was was average it was i mean it was all right on my scale uh, all of it was was all right. It wasn't uh, spectacular. It wasn't horrible. Uh, right, kind of right in the middle. Yeah, I think you know what you're getting at Sahara Pizza. So, um, so yeah, that's our take on Sahara. If you uh, want to order a Sahara Pizza, you can order it. Um, you can call them up and and salt in here, or uh, you can uh, go online check them out SaharaPizzaSultan.com. I got the phone number for you guys if you'd like it really quick. It's three six zero eight six three. 3637. That's 360-863-3637. So if you're feeling a pizza tonight, go ahead and give them a call. And uh, it, it'll totally be acceptable for you, especially if you're uh, if you're just hungry enough to eat it. So, um, yeah, with that being said, we're going to move on uh, to our next section uh, after a break and a little bit of music. Josh again and you know we we're pretty excited to start this podcast and um, me personally I like I, I like to listen to podcasts and uh, there's a ton of stuff that we have to listen to to consume mm-hmm. all the time right now to watch on YouTube or on Netflix or whatever it might be so I just kind of want to throw out to you guys what are you guys listening to uh, watching what kind of things have been sparking your interest your mind uh, mm-hmm. as we uh, kind of get launch this podcast ourselves so for me, I think knowing that I'm not necessarily the most intellectually um, robust, nor even doctrinally or theologically, you know, memorizing things. I've had quite a few that I've liked um, and watched, or excuse me, listened to as far as podcasts. But here's the, kind of the three that stand out for me. And they're kind of more on the reform side, although I'm not hardcore reform, although it's helped me to think through some things and why I believe what I believe. But ask Ligonier, and it's really, this is a small one. It's three to five minutes. There's another really small one called Simply Put, also by Ligonier Ministries. And that they answer some really cool questions very quickly, also very emphatically. And so it gives me a chance to go back and look. Um, my son-in-law, TJ Lucasen has one called The Holy Bold Podcast, and he's strongly opinionated on a lot of things and really well-researched, so it's been good and challenging for me. I love Tony Evans, so his podcast, and it's mostly his sermons, but he's got a good one. And then recently, the Christianity Today one, The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill, um, that has been challenging hard to hear just having known a lot of people that have been impacted by mars hill but in particular just the cautionary tale that all that has been john what about you 
Uh, so I don't really listen to a whole lot. I, mean, I know we're, we're on the podcast and we're wanting people to listen to this. So I don't know if that's maybe hypocritical, but uh, I don't listen to a, a, even music. I don't really listen to. It's more just background noise when I drive. Um, I will occasionally listen to some sermon podcasts, things like that. But I, I feel like I'm more visual. I like to, to watch movies. I like to watch TV shows. Uh, part of that's just being able to veg out when I get home from work or something like that. But um, really, the, the primary thing that I like to watch is, is sports, live sports, um, baseball, football, whatever. Um, and so, so I'm doing a lot, a lot of that. I like to go to movies. I've got the, the AMC Stubbs A-List Pass, which if you like movies, definitely recommend that. Is that three a week or something you like that? You can see three movies a week in any format. So 3D, IMAX, Dolby Cinema, whatever the case uh, for that is not a paid promotion, by the way. John just really. We are it. not supported by AOC. I just like it. It's twenty-two bucks a month, and I get to see three movies a week. Wow. Up to three movies a week. I don't usually see three movies a week, but. Um, not usually. Not usually. I have, um, but I like I like movies. Um, you know, stories resonate. I think with all of us for sure. Know, whether whether we're listening to them, whether we're watching them. And I think that's that's partly why we want to do something like this uh, for you guys is, is to tell you a little bit about our stories and, and who we are and some of the experiences that we have. And so I think that resonates. And so I think we all like that in some form or another. Yeah, the challenge for me is that I didn't talk about what I watch. And part of that is that I'm a tiny bit embarrassed. What I tend to watch ends up amounting to soap opera type stuff. All American, uh, Madam Secretary, Days of Our Lives, Kathy. Not no, I used to though as a oh. kid. Gosh, <laughs> all my children, General Hospital. Wow. Anyways, did you know when you used to watch All My Children that you'd have so many children? No, but I'm pretty sure I should probably sue ABC. What? <laughs> cool. Yeah, and I know um, Aaron had mentioned it, and we've all been kind of listening to the the rise and fall of Mars Hill and it's been I think impactful for all of us in different ways because we've seen um each of us kind of firsthand because we, we were you know around while all this was happening and um but we've also just seen firsthand the the way that power can be abused um in our country the way that power can be abused in the church and and like Aaron said the cautionary tale of Mars Hill has just been um I think something to to, I don't know, kind of mourn mm -hmm, over absolutely. and something to, to learn from, definitely. So um, just want to get your guys' take on uh, what kind of things have been, you know, hitting you as you've listened to this and, and how, how do you think the church should respond uh, to something that's kind of critical of the church's, at least one particular church's expression? Um, and so, yeah, how, how do we respond to that? Yeah, again, not knowing really even totally what you guys think about it, much less our listeners or listener. Hi, Mom. Um, I'm not exactly sure how everybody should respond to this, but I'll give a general statement, Josh. I think the church and church leaders should respond to this humbly. I think our eyes should be open to the fact that he, this guy Mike Cosper talks about in the intro that there's dangers of money, celebrity, youth, scandal, and power, and that it's not unique, not to churches for sure, but it's not unique to that church. Um, we're even doing a podcast, for goodness sake. So one of the challenges that I got was the branding and the platform and that you go from being pretty humble and pretty like, let's not do church the way everybody's always done church to where you become this huge force. And it wasn't just Mark, but a number of his leaders and being quiet and justifying mistreatment and pride and all that because of great fruit and how great is the fruit when there's so much damage. Although we know that people came to know Jesus, you know, that families were restored, lives are transformed, but the pain and the agony of that um, has been a real eye opener. I've actually felt a little bit depressed having heard it and listened to it. And even just the um, deconstruction of faith that has led people not to Jesus but away from Jesus, that's broken my heart. But again, I think we should be open-eyed, open-eared, open-hearted to the Lord and what He would discipline us with through something like this. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely been hard to listen to. We've, I mean, like Josh said, we've, we're, we're in this Seattle area, roughly, 
And so we've we've been around Mars Hill. We've even attended you know some conferences there and some different things uh, over the years. And so there's a little bit of uh, of conviction there, like we're you know maybe mm-hmm. somehow um, kind of culpable with with what's gone on. Um, although obviously we weren't on the, in the inside, we weren't. I mean, we weren't part of Mars Hill. We just attended things or yeah. listened to teaching or even used you know their resources for for study things like that. Um, but there's this kind of this feeling of man, sh- should we have done more to to point out some of these things over the years? Um, and so, and then obviously the, the big concern is I, I don't want, and I don't think any of us want to end up like that no, or any, any kind of scandal, obviously. And we, uh, we try to, to be authentic. We try to be humble. We try to, I mean, we're, we're, we try to be the same people on Sunday morning mm-hmm. as we are the rest of the week. And that's kind right. of the point of this podcast. Um, but there's, there's definitely blind spots in, in church leadership and it's it's definitely brought things forward to me that you know we need to make sure we're we're trying to see those blind spots as well as we can we're trying to be accountable we're trying to to remain humble we're trying to to put jesus forward and not our own uh excellence or effort or desires or whatever the case may be but really promote jesus above everything else and you know that's our hope that's our desire that's what we try to do but like i said there's blind spots we just got to be aware of those that's good yeah, I think for me, one of the things, like when I first found out about this podcast and found out that it was Christianity Today that was putting it out, I was really kind of, um, I mean, I don't know, like Christianity Today has been has become a really a, a strong voice uh, in the Christian world mm-hmm. to call out uh, leaders who are, uh, you know, not living Christ's uh, example. And, I mean, they broke the whole Ravi Zacharias story. And, and I think there's a lot of Christians who'd be like, hey, you know, Christianity Today, why are you like trying to bring down the church? Why are you trying to bring up so many negative things and pointing out things like, hey, can't we just stay positive and, and all this kind of stuff? But I think, you know, like when you look back at the prophets of the church, you know, they were calling out the people of God uh, more often than not. Right. And and a lot of times it wasn't well received, you know, like, I mean, Ahab was called out and he wasn't super excited. He, he tend to, uh, you know, surround himself with uh, prophets that would tell him like, hey, everything's great. Everything's good. You're, you know, your land is expanding. God is behind you, you know. And so and he'd be like, man, why are you, you know, why are these people calling you out? Like, that's that's totally unchristian. It's totally, you know, unJewish at the wow. time. Or whatever, you know, and I think that, um, uh, yeah, I just think that uh, Christianity today, I think it's just bold to have, to have the kind of guts to stand up and to say, hey, you know, this is not what Christ is like. Uh, Christ does not stand for these kind of things. He's not uh, a power abuser. He is not someone mm-hmm. who abuses women. He's not, you know, uh, this kind of person. And so I think, you know, I think it really communicates to the broader society um, when you see someone on the inside, like Christianity Today, standing up and saying, hey, no, that's not acceptable. We're not going to stand for this. This is not who Christ is. And I think it communicates to, to people who don't believe something very true that, hey, we have, that we're not just about protecting our people at all costs, especially when, uh, they're, when they are, you know, harming people. We're not okay with that. In fact, we need to stand up and we Amen. need to say something. Uh, I mean, I think that's what I take from it is that, is that there were people along the way in, in Mars Hill who tried to take a stand, who tried to, to, um, to say something, and it was silenced. Very uh, quickly. It was silenced and it was cut off by people who claimed to, to be doing it for God. And I think that that's just really sad and really, uh, I mean, it's really common because you look at the scriptures and you see that there was so many people who... Uh, so many prophets who stood up and it's their blood <laughs> at the hands of their own people. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I just, that's kind of what it makes me think of. It makes me think of uh, how difficult it is to stand up in the church and to say something uh, because oftentimes you're going to be silenced by those people of power and it's, it's really difficult. It really is. Yeah, and it's, it's hard to, as a church leader, um, you've, you've got kind of this, this tendency and it's, it, you know, it's probably pride that uh, you want to get defensive not necessarily at marshall mm-hmm. like i said we weren't really involved with with them other than attending some things but you you kind of have this attitude or you can 
have this attitude of, well, that, that couldn't happen to us, right? We've got these guardrails in place. We've, there's, it, we're not as big. We're not, you know, whatever the case may be. And it, it's not going to happen to us. And, and that's kind of, a, I think, a default uh, protection mechanism. Yeah. And really have had to force myself to get beyond that as I've listened to it and, and really reflect on what, what are we doing? What am I doing as a church leader that uh, could potentially be damaging to, to people? Because it's the, the last thing I want to do as a, as a pastor at a church mm-hmm. is to, to lead to the, the hurt of, of people who attend church and, and possibly um, force them out of the church. And that, that's not something that I, I think any of us want, and we want to be sensitive to that. Um, at the same time, as a, as a church goer my entire life, I think it's forced me to think through, um, you know, why do we elevate people? And the, the podcast, one of the episodes in particular, I can't remember which one it was called, but uh, they talk about kind of this celebrity culture and this this thing that we do really throughout throughout culture, whether it's with athletes or movie stars or musicians or or even pastors, we we put people on these pedestals and we we are drawn to these charismatic you know, high functioning, high performing people. And, and so we really, as individuals, I think have to, to reflect on that. And what are, what are we looking for in our churches and in our leaders? That's right. And are we part of the problem of, you know, trying to chase after the, the latest celebrity pastor or, or church or whatever, rather than looking for um, scripture, looking for Jesus, looking for authenticity, looking for humility. That's good. You know, so it's, That's it's good. been convicting on kind of both fronts for me. I agree with that. I think one of the other things, Josh, really quick that has stood out to me in this is that people are really quick to jump on the bandwagon of kicking Christians when they're down. And I mean, Mark did actually a really good job early on and I was privy at least way back 97, 98 to have helped start Cascade right around the same time, maybe even just a few months after Mars Hill had started. So we saw him in some different circles and he really wanted church to be different and not like the way it ended up. So rather than kicking people when they're down, maybe learning from them, picking them up, going to speak that truth prophetically, kind of where Ephesians says, speaking the truth and love. And I, I really want to learn how to do that better when people fail and fail miserably rather than write them off or to use the vernacular of today, cancel them. Like look to be like, where, where can you learn? Where can you repent? Where can you be more like Jesus? Not necessarily to put somebody back in leadership that has a lot to work on, but really to extend that grace and truth all at the same time, like Jesus. Yeah, well, it's been a good first episode here with you guys. I really uh, like hanging out with you and eating some pizza, even if it's Sahara's, even if it's something we've had a hundred times before. And uh, I am looking forward to eating some great pizzas with you guys as we uh, keep going. And uh, and for you listeners out there, let us know what pizzas you like. We, we are online, uh, crosswordchurch.org. Check us out. Uh, let us know what kind of pizzas you like, maybe on our Facebook page or whatever it is. And uh, we will talk to you uh, later. Peace, my friends. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks, guys. Hopefully uh, you uh, enjoyed the podcast and uh, let your friends know. Give us that review so we can get this out there. And you know, we want to just help you integrate your faith into, into life. This has been Pastors and Pizza, a production of Crosswater Community Church in Sultan, Washington. Check us out online at crosswaterchurch.org. We meet every Sunday morning at 9 and 1045 on the corner of 3rd and Birch in Sultan. Thanks for listening. Be sure to leave us that five-star review. We hope to see you soon. Bye. Adios.